Well, good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the kitchen and to Apron Strings. And this video today is going to be just a little bit different. I'm going to cook some things that y'all have seen me cook or cook something similar before. But I'm just going to let you see what I'm doing to make our evening meal. I'm going to have butter beans and collard greens, and I'm going to make some fries. So I'm just chops. going to give you a little bitty uh, time to watch while I'm cleaning the collard greens, and then I'll get my bacon crisped up like I do, some for the greens and some for the butter beans, and get all that cooking. And uh, I'll just bring y'all along for a day in the kitchen with me, a little bit at a time. So let's clean some collard greens, folks. You have to uh, either soak them and wash them several times first, or you want to take the big stem out of the middle. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just tearing the greens off of the stem and tearing them in pieces and putting them in the bowl over here. The stem's going in the compost bin. And then I'm going to soak them here in a little bit and wash them and uh, get them all cleaned and ready. But I will bring y'all over for just a little bit of this. Then I'll bring you when I start to do the butter beans. I bought five bunches of collards at uh, HEB a while ago. I really like them better in the winter when it's frosted on them and they're sweeter. But hey, I know how to add a little honey or sugar. So what I'm doing now is just getting those big old stems out. Now my daddy, when I was a kid, I didn't really like greens. Mama didn't cook the greens, Daddy did. And Daddy didn't take those stems out. Well, I went to Ain Audrey's one time. That's the one I got the fig cake from that y'all have made. And I saw how she did her greens, and I liked them. This is how she did them. So, I am doing Ain Audrey style greens today. I'm getting the big veins out, or the stem, or whatever. And sometimes these little side ones, if they're tough, I'll get them out too. But these aren't bad today. So I'm going to continue to get these clean, and I'll be back in a little bit with the next part of oh, my when supper you, tonight. When you've got through getting the stems out, you want to put your green. Well, there's another stem. You want to put your greens down in water, and you're just going to move them. Just slosh them around. You're getting all the sand off of them that's in them. Now I've already been doing this on these, so I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm going to do them like that, and then I'm going to pick them up. I want the sand that has come off of them to go to the bottom. I don't want to. I don't want them sandy, and I'm going to wash them two or three more times. But this is the process. And even when you're cleaning them, if you decide to try to cook some, these did not seem dirty while I was while I was cleaning them. But let me let's just wait and see what shows up in the bottom. This is the same way I do my pinto beans. I put them in water after I look them for rocks and dirt, and I slosh them and I transfer them back and forth a couple of times like this. And that way the dirt was, ooh, that water's dirty. The dirt will stay in the water most of the time, and then you'll get to where you don't have anything. Now, I don't know how well y'all can see. But see how dirty that water is? That's why you have to be very careful. That you wash your greens good. Get all the sand out of there. Then we're going to transfer this one back over here, fill it back up with water, and I'm going to do the same thing again. And then I'm going to get my bacon browned and get them in the pot and store them to um, cook it. And it'll take a while for them to cook down. And I'm going to cook them in some um, chicken broth to make them have a richer flavor. But they're also going to have bacon in them. So I'll show you all that. Okay, for the pot that I'm going to cook my <clears throat> greens in. And also, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got one here that I'm going to cook my butter beans in. And I'm doing the same thing. I've got my kitchen snips, and I'm cutting my bacon in little pieces, and I'm going to let it cook until it's crisp. And then I'm going to add my butter beans in. Uh, I'm not draining the bacon fat out. Some of y'all are going to cringe, but that's what gives it flavor. That's the gold of the South. We have to have our bacon fat. 
and I'm just kind of separating it a little bit. Of course, when they start cooking, they'll come apart, but I like to make sure it's apart good. And I want plenty of good bacon flavor in those collard greens. If I had a ham hock or some of my tasso, that would flavor it really well. But I'm just going to use smoked bacon, and this is hickory smoked. Okay, I just wanted to show y'all. Now I'm just going to cook it till it browns, and this is for both. This is for my uh, butter beans, and this is going to be for the collard greens. Okay, my bacon has browned, and I've got quite a bit of grease rendered in there. Probably three tablespoons at least. And uh, sometimes if I feel like I've done too much, I'll scoop out some of the bacon and just put it aside to do um, baked potatoes or something later. But I want all of that in my greens. So I've got eight cups of chicken broth and I have added to that a ta uh, two tablespoons of onion powder and about a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. And I'm going to let that uh, kind of deglaze the bacon bits off the bottom of the pan. I'm going to taste it for salt and then I'm going to put my greens in and just let them slow cook until they're tender. Collards are tougher. They're like the outer leaves of a head of cabbage. They're not as tender as mustard greens and turnip greens. And they just have a, a unique flavor the to them. This is boiling for my greens. So I'm just going to drop them in. And it looks like we're going to have a bunch, but let me tell you, it cooks down to just nearly nothing. And I'm going to put the lid on them and cut the fire down. And every now and then I'll come over here and stir them around <clears throat> so they can, um, what's on the bottom can come to the top. I'm going to cut it down to a medium low. And I'm just going to put the lid on it and let them cook down. Now we're going to get started on the butter beans. I've got my broth. I've got about four cups of broth in here, and I put a tablespoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I'm going to add a little bit of, this is called Zydeco Chop Chop, and it's a Louisiana thing. But what's in it is onion and garlic, red bell and green bell peppers, green onions and parsley. And normally you would rehydrate it in some water. Now you can make that yourself. I'm just going to put this in my butter beans for extra flavor, and that's about two tablespoons, and it's just a mixture. You can probably order that on Amazon, I don't know. You can make your own if you have a, a dehydrator, because it's dehydrated. All of it is dehydrated. Now, we didn't raise butter beans. We don't usually ever raise butter beans. Butter beans are a pain to shell. They hurt your hands. Now, we have uh, pea shellers. We've got two good ones, but they don't do good on butter beans, and I don't like to shell butter beans, and we don't eat them that often, so I just bought these at HEB, and that's where we're going to get our butter beans fresh out of the freezer. It's a lot better, folks, if y'all didn't know it, to buy frozen vegetables than canned, because they pick them, shell them, and freeze dry them and bag them. So you're getting almost as fresh as from the field if you buy frozen. If you buy canned, it's got the canning process. Some of them put stuff in it that's not real healthy for you. So anytime you can, rather than canned things that you're gonna cook, you need to buy frozen. I'm just gonna bring this up to a simmer, put the lid on it and let them cook until they're tender, which will be probably at least an hour because I like them real tender. Then I'll bring y'all back. I'll show you the turn the collard this greens. This way, if y'all get ready there. to do some southern cooking, you'll know how to cook some of our favorite stuff, butter beans and greens. And then after a while, I'm going to make that yummy cornbread. And if you've never had it, watch for the video, and you're going to want to make you some cornbread. Y'all, can you see how much the greens have already wilted down? And it's only been like eight minutes. Uh, it doesn't take long for them to wilt. And they will wilt a little bit more, and then they'll just become very, very tender. Collards aren't going to get tender yeah. enough that they cook all to pieces. They're going to hold some shape, but they will be tender and a delight to eat. I wanted to all show right. y'all the greens have cooked way down. But see how they've turned that dark green color? 
that's the color they get when they're finished cooking, but they're still a little bit tough, so I'm going to cook them some more. But see, the pot was heaped up, and they've gone down a lot. So I'm just going to let them continue to simmer along until they're tender. Our butter beans. Let me get a spoon and stir them where y'all can see. See, they're just cooking. I just want them real tender. This, the skin on them to me tends to be tough, so I like to cook them down to where they're um, they're soft. Okay, y'all, so here's the butter beans, and they're soft and good. I'm just gonna let them continue to simmer for a little while. I usually do that. Here's the turnip greens. I'll cook down, and I've tasted them, and they are absolutely wonderful. So, I am not going to dish this up right now and show y'all in a pretty plate simply because Troy's out mowing and we won't be eating for a while so this is going to be different y'all are getting two for one the, I'm sorry it is not turnip greens it's it's collard greens and butter beans and then in a little while I'm going to make the cornbread and fry pork chops and I will show y'all that at least the cornbread probably tomorrow okay folks this is a little different video than usual because you're not going to see the tablecloth and it all set pretty like I usually do it. Because I still have to cook pork chops and I still will make the cornbread later on. So, but you're getting two this time. I showed you how I do the collard greens and I showed you how I do the butter beans. And I don't have exact measurements. What I told you on the onion and garlic powder is what I actually put into this and it's very good. But I don't have a recipe card for you this time. Y'all will just have to watch and kind of see. Now, our, if y'all will watch the video and just pay attention, I told you so many cups of chicken broth, so much onion and garlic powder, and um, salt to taste. And then I put the Zydeco seasonings in the um, butter beans that I told y'all what. That's just dehydrated stuff. You can do that. Um, and you don't even have to put that in there. Those butter beans are delicious without the Zydeco in it. Just onion and garlic powder, the bacon seasoning, salt and pepper to taste, and cook them till they're tender. It'll make you want to move to the south. If you've never had it, you'll want to go where you can get it. But probably in your frozen foods at the store, you can get a bag of butter beans and cook them. They're yummy. These are the brown speckled butter beans. So, glad y'all came to the kitchen for this part of the meal and maybe you've learned to do something you didn't know how to do. Greens are very healthy for you. Um, besides that, they're just good stuff. You remember I made that pepper sauce that time? Well, I'll be pouring some of that vinegar, that hot vinegar made from peppers over my collard greens after a while. So if y'all want to go back and watch that video, this is what I made it for. I will be right back here tomorrow. I hope y'all come back tomorrow and uh, learn the rest of the, the menu so you can put it on your supper table. Don't forget to spend some good time with your family. See so you can start practicing for Thanksgiving. Start practicing some dishes and practicing putting those electronics away and just having family reunion time. And by Thanksgiving you ought to know just exactly how to do it. The good Lord bless y'all and be sure you come back tomorrow Tell your friends about my channel and encourage them to subscribe and watch, watch, watch. I need watchers. I like to know y'all are looking at what I'm taking time to make. I'll see you tomorrow.